This is where all dreams is beginning. I am over the moon to be here on the glorious stage of the Royal Shakespeare Company's Matilda the Musical at the Cambridge Theatre in London. Isn't it a spectacular stage? Today we're celebrating hundreds of magical stories and unforgettable characters like Matilda, Willy Wonka and the BFG because 100 years ago, on the 13th of September, the world's number one storyteller was born. Does anyone know his name? That's right, Roald Dahl, of course, and that is why everybody here today is in their delicious fancy dress. Give us an enormous cheer, everybody. <laughs> Honestly, this has got to be the biggest party ever because there are thousands of schools watching right now from the UK and Canada to India, Australia and beyond. We have got some tremendous surprises in store and you're going to need your pens and papers, so make sure you get them ready. You can tweet us your suggestions and ideas and your school shout outs to them, uh, to see them shouted out on the screen. The hashtag is Roll Dahl Party. Michael in Qatar has asked, what did Roll Dahl do before he became a writer? Well, Michael, it is a very good question and we are about to find out in this next video and afterwards, I've got a few questions for you. So open your gogglers. You need to watch this video very carefully because I want to know where was Roald Dahl born? Which creatures live in the forest? And who inspired the BFG? Are you ready? Pay close attention. Here we go. Welcome to the whoopsie whiffling world of Roald Dahl. You're about to learn more about his curiously unexpected and magical life. It began on the 13th of September 1916 in Hlandaf, Wales, where he was born to Norwegian parents. This year we're celebrating 100 jump squiffling years of the world's number one storyteller, whose books have sold over 200 million worldwide. We'll be your guides on a journey to discover more about Roald Dahl. 
his influences and stories. We also seem to have lost a couple of our library books. We're going to need you to be super observant and see how many you can spot on our journey. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's go! Here you can see just some of the letters that Roald Dahl wrote to his mother whilst he was at St Peter's boarding school. He always signed his letters, boy. The same name of his autobiography you're holding now. This is Roald Dahl's school report. It says he was a muddler. That's right. Roald Dahl was never very good at school, but his teachers say how he showed promise. He was a chocolate taster. Best job ever. He was indeed. Roald Dahl and his friends at Repton Boarding School, where he went to age 13, used to be sent chocolate bars by Cadbury's to test. This inspired him to write Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. However, he didn't just work as a chocolate taster. Let's continue on to discover what else he did. Before Roald Dahl was a writer, he was a pilot. In 1940, he even crashed his plane in the western desert of North Africa in Libya. This is a newspaper article he wrote where he describes being shot down. In 1954, Roald Dahl moved to Great Missenden in Buckinghamshire, where he was inspired by the wild woods around him. Can you think of what books might have been inspired by this? Fantastic Mr Fox. Look, there's even drawings. That's the first drawing Roald Dahl ever did of Mr Fox. Now, can you think of any other books set in the forest? Danny the Champion of the World, obviously. Correct! We all know where this is from, James and the Giant's Peach. James and the Giant Peach! That was Roald Dahl's first book. Dahl wanted to move away from using bunnies and squirrels and cuddly animals as the characters in his stories and instead chose insects. They can sometimes get a bad rap. Can you remember the names of the insects he used in the story? Old Green Grasshopper. Centipede. Miss Spider. Quick, I can hear some mischief happening. The Mugglewumps have been here. They've turned the room upside down, just like in the Twits. Hopefully they haven't touched the library. That looks like the trunch ball. This is Beatrix Havergal, whose appearance, not personality, inspired the trunch ball. Look at the size of that shoe. Does that belong to Roald Dahl? Yes, that's one of the sandals that Roald Dahl sent to Quentin Blake when he was first drawing the BFG. Who's this? That's Wally Saunders, Roald Dahl's builder. He was one of the kindest people that Roald Dahl knew, and also over six feet tall. He was the inspiration for the BFG. That's amazing. Now, how many facts about Roald Dahl's life can you remember? Happy Roald Dahl Day! Fantastic. Were you all watching very closely? I'm down with our studio audience, so let's see if you know the answer. Where was Roald Dahl born? Clyde of Wales. Correct. Well done. Very good. What about which fantastic creature uh, did we see living in the forest? Fantastic Mr Fox. Yes, spot on. And finally, who inspired the BFG? Roald Dahl's builder. <gasps> well done. Whoopsie splunkers, we have got some real life Matildas right here. We are now going to find out more about Roald Dahl's writing process. I am so excited to introduce our first guest. So everybody here in the audience and everybody watching around the world, please put your hands together and make some noise for the archivist of Roald Dahl's Museum and Story Centre. It's Rachel White. <laughs> Hello Rachel, Hello. lovely to have you with us. So can you tell us a little bit about your job? Well my job is to look after Roald Dahl's archive which is all his manuscripts, his stories, his photographs and all his letters. And anybody can come and visit the museum? Anybody can come and visit the museum especially if you're a Roald Dahl fan. So we have children, we have mums and dads, grandparents, anybody who loves Roald Dahl. I'm going to have to come along you and are. you've got some very precious objects there we that do. you can't find anywhere well, else. Yes what indeed. What sort of things have you got? Well since we're sitting here on the stage of Matilda the Musical I thought I'd talk about the very first draft of Matilda that we've got. Now in this very first draft, Matilda is horrible. She's really naughty and she plays horrible tricks on people. She's does got, she? She does. She's got lovely parents in this version. So it's totally opposite. Completely the opposite. And Roald Dahl wrote all this story and then he got to the end and he thought, actually, I don't like this story very much. 
I'm going to change it around. So he made Matilda really, really nice with these amazing powers. He made her parents really, really mean, and he brought the Trunchbull in. And that's the story, obviously, we know about that now. That we know and love. Is it true that Roald Dahl always used to write with a pencil? Yes, yeah, he didn't type anything, he didn't use a computer, he wrote everything with a yellow pencil, yellow Dixon Ticonderoga pencil, all the way from America, he got these, and he wrote on yellow legal paper, and that's how he wrote all of his stories, longhand. So he was quite particular very, very about particular, his tools. Um, I Nura in Boyle Road wants to know even more about Roald Dahl's writing process. Can you tell us anything about any of his other books? Yes, so Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That started off with 15 children in. And Did it? Yeah. 15 children? Seriously. So that he had all these children who were really, really naughty, and he really loved writing about them, but the book got too long, and yeah. he had to cut them out, and he cut them out, and he cut them out. So Can we ended up... Can you tell us about any of the children yeah, that were cut and think. didn't make the final book? We had a guy called Marvin Prune, and we had a girl called Miranda Mary Piker, who was really naughty, a bit like Augustus Gloop. She went swimming in the Chocolate River and then went over the waterfall, chocolate waterfall, and ended up as peanut brittle mix. Oh, what a grisly end. But she probably deserved it. So if we want to yeah. know more about those characters, we have to come and visit the museum. We do, yes. Well, next we've got a birthday message from Roald Dahl's daughter, Lucy, and we asked her to tell us something about her dad that no one else knows. Here's something that not many people know about Roald Dahl, is he had a bald head and it got very cold in the winter and whenever he went outside, he had a little yellow woolly hat that he would wear on the top of his head, otherwise his bald patch would get cold. Hands up if you have read the BFG book. Everybody here. The BFG is, of course, the big friendly giant, the only friendly giant in giant country, in fact. And this year, his story was turned into a huge Hollywood film. Has anyone here seen the BFG? <laughs> Well, we caught up with the cast when they were in London to hear more about the life in giant country. Hello to all the schools watching all over, all over the world. In classrooms, school halls and libraries. I'm Mark Rylance and I play the BFG. My name is Penelope Wilton and I play the Queen in the BFG. Happy, Happy Royal, Royal Dal Day! Day. Bone cruncher, child chewer, meat dripper, gizzard gulper, butcher boy. Please don't eat me. You think because I'm a giant that I'm a man goblin cannibal? <laughs> You can call me the big, friendly giant. Oh, my. I catch dreams. This one sounds like you. There are bad dreams here, too. Yeah. Run. Sophie, hide. You has a delicious little bean. Are you scared? Yeah. I'm not. I have a plan. Brave Sophie. This be the story of a little gal. It'll be great adventures and laughter. Times will be hard, times will be soft. So hold your breaths, cross your fingers, here we go. I'm going to call you BFG. Hi, I'm Ruby Barnhill, and I play Sophie in the BFG. Here are my favourite moments from making the movie. It was really, really fun working with amazing actors. There's Penelope plays the Queen in such a wonderful way. Mark Rylance, who plays the BFG, is really great. We get to go see the Queen in Buckingham Palace. It was really fun to be a tiny person in a giant size world because I would see a jar and it was like up to here on me. 
Oh my gosh, my favourite set was Dream Country. The costumes in this film are absolutely fabulous. You can see all my favourites in the BFG. Fantastic! Uh oh! It looks like some of our guests in the audience have eaten some of Miss Trunchbull's chocolate cake! <gasps> Has anyone made a delumptious cake for Roald Dahl Day? I mean, we are celebrating, after all, it is a party. Now, there is someone very important we haven't talked about yet. Can anyone tell me who illustrates Roald Dahl's books? Quentin That's right. Quentin was Roald Dahl's favourite illustrator. So get your pens and your papers ready, because at the end of the next video, Quentin Blake himself is going to show you how to draw an Oompa Loompa. But first, I've got something very special for your ears. If you've ever wondered what Roald Dahl's voice sounds like, you're about to find out. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory Written and read by Roald Dahl Suddenly, Mr Wonka stopped. In front of him, there was a shiny metal door. The party crowded round. On the door, in large letters, it said, The Chocolate Room. An important room this, cried Mr Wonka, taking a bunch of keys from his pocket and slipping one into the keyhole of the door. This is the nerve centre of the whole factory. Mr Wonka opened the door. Five children and nine grown-ups pushed their ways in. And oh, what an amazing sight it was that now met their eyes. They were looking down upon a lovely valley. There were green meadows on either side of the valley and along the bottom of it there flowed a great brown river. What is more, there was a tremendous waterfall halfway along the river, a steep cliff over which the water curled and rolled in a solid sheet and then went crashing down into a boiling, churning whirlpool of froth and spray. Below the waterfall, and this was the most astonishing sight of all, a whole mass of enormous glass pipes were dangling down into the river from somewhere high up in the ceiling. They really were enormous, those pipes, and they were sucking up the brownish, muddy water from the river and carrying it away to goodness knows where. There we are, cried Mr Wonka, dancing up and down and pointing his gold top cane at the great brown river. It's all chocolate. Every drop of that river is hot melted chocolate of the finest quality. The very finest quality. There's enough chocolate in there to fill every bathtub in the entire country. And all the swimming pools as well. Isn't it terrific? And just look at my pipes. They suck up the chocolate and carry it away to all the other rooms in the factory where it is needed. Thousands of gallons an hour, my dear children. Thousands and thousands of gallons. The children and their parents were too flabbergasted to speak. They simply stood and stared. Suddenly the air was filled with screams of excitement. The screams came from Veruca Salt. She was pointing frantically to the other side of the river. Look, look over there, she screamed. What is it? He's moving, he's walking. It's a little person, it's a little man, down there below the waterfall. Everybody stopped picking buttercups and stared across the river. She's right, Grandpa, cried Charlie. It is a little man. Can you see him? I see him, Charlie, said Grandpa Joe excitedly. And now everybody started shouting at once. There's lots of them. What are they doing? Where do they come from? Who are they? Children and parents alike rushed down to the edge of the river to get a closer look. Aren't they fantastic? Look at their funny long hair. But they can't be real people, Charlie said. Of course they're real people, Mr. Wonka answered. They're Oompa Loompas. Oompa Loompas, everyone said at once. Oompa Loompas. Imported direct from Loompa Land, said Mr. Wonka proudly. Welcome. I'm Quentin Blake. I've illustrated all Roald Dahl's books except one and today I'm going to talk to you about it and show you some of the drawings that I've done. And everybody seems to do Oompa Loompa slightly differently. In the previous pictures they've all got long hair and I thought would it be nice if they had long hair but it stood up on end. Um, and I like it because it, somehow it makes them look more mischievous I think. I think they're on Willy Wonka's side, they're helping him, and you can imagine him. That There is something slightly naughty about hair that stands on end, I think. This is how I draw them, if I can remember how they go.
Wowee, Quentin Blake drawing and Roald Dahl reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It doesn't get much more magical than that. And you can listen to the whole story on Audible. How's everyone's Oompa Loompas looking? Hold them up for the cameras. And if you're watching online, share your pictures and your present ideas using the hashtag Roald Dahl Party. Have you ever thought that Oompa Loompa is a bit of a funny word? I have. Well, let's try saying it lots and lots of times, as fast as we can, all together. Ready, steady, go. Oompa Loompa, Oompa Loompa, Oompa Loompa, Oompa Loompa, Oompa Loompa, Oompa Loompa. It's quite difficult. So, to play some fizz whizzing party games, please welcome to the stage and make some noise for the Word Wizards. <laughs> Lovely to be here. My name is Fiona and I'm Sarah Jane. Uh, Sarah Jane? You just whiz popped. Have I what? Whiz popped. Whiz popped? What does that mean? What does it mean? What is it? <laughs> Farting? Yes, it certainly does. And I'm going to check in my dictionary what it actually says a whiz pop is. Whiz popping is what happens when air comes out of your bottom with a popping sound, as happens when you drink a lot of frobscottle. Giants find whiz-popping more socially acceptable than burping. And here's a quote from the BFG. Whiz-popping is a sign of happiness. It is music in our ears. You surely is not telling me that a little whiz-popping is forbidden among human beings. Now, Royal Dahl, he loved playing with words and making up brand new words. And this Oxford Royal Dahl Dictionary is an extra usual dictionary because it contains all the words that Royal Dahl used in his stories and poems. Now, some of the words are real and some of them he made up himself. And this dictionary will really help you with your writing. It'll stop you from being biff squiggled by words. Whoa, 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 what? Biff squiggled? Yeah, biff squiggled. Does anyone know what biff squiggled means? Confused? Yeah? Confused? That's right. Now, the way that Royal Dahl made up the word biff squiggled is very interesting. He used the word biff, which means punch, and he put it together with the word squiggle, which means like a squiggly bit of doodling, because he felt that when you're confused, then it feels like your brain has been punched or biffed inside your head, and then you end up feeling like a squiggly bit of doodling because you're so muddled. Right, let's find out how many Roald Dahl words, words you know in a game that we like to call Dictionary Dips. So you'll need your paper and pen to play along and you need to write A or B for each question. Is everyone ready? We're ready. OK, question number one. What does bug whiffle mean? Is it a silly or unimportant idea or B, a large hammer which is bigger than a sausage? So A or B, write it on your paper. Question two. What does Raz Twizzler mean, is it? Is it A, a big snake, or B, something wonderfully exciting? A or B, write it down. Question three, what is a vermicious knid? <laughs> is it A, an evil creature from the planet Vermees, or B, a chocolate bar? Written your answer down. And finally, question number four, what word is SEO trot the backwards spelling of? Is it A, tornado, or B, tortoise. A or B, just it down. OK, everyone, time's up. It's time to find out how you did. So get ready to mark your answers. Question number one, the correct answer is A. A bug whistle is a silly or unimportant <laughs> idea. OK, question two, the answer was B. Raz Twizzlers means something super exciting, of course. Question three, the answer is A. Yes. A, ver a vermicious knid is an evil creature from the planet Vermes. Ooh, nasty. And finally, question four. SEO trot is, of course, B. Tortoise spelt backwards. How did you do? How about our viewers over at Fall River School and Bickley Park? How did you get on? With all these wonder crump words, Roald Dahl didn't just write stories. He was also a poet. He wrote some really revolting rhymes, and I've got a big secret to share with you, so come closely. This Christmas, his revolting rhymes will be on the BBC, and teachers, I hope you're listening, because we will be launching a very special Roald Dahl writing competition to find out the nation's 
best revolting rhymers. Ooh, yes we will. More details coming up soon, teachers. And all of you, make sure you use your wonder crump words in your rhymes. Now, we've talked a lot about the heroes in Dull's book, but what about the villains? Who do you think is the worst? She might be around here somewhere. You don't want her coming on stage, do you? No, me neither. I don't. From those foulsome giants to the Grand High Witch and the Twits, it's time to decide who is the foulest of them all. Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, Oompa Loompas, Chidlers, Giants and Vermicious Knibs to the Lord of Villainous Villains Debate. Campaigning for the most despicable baddies ever invented are four marvellous authors, Andy Stanton. I think we'll all agree they're one of the more despicable partnerships in the world of children's fiction. Philip Ardar. But I actually think <laughs> that I have won before we've even started. Francesca Simon. Boo for the real villains! Boo for the giants! And Stephen Butler. I've said enough, I've said enough. Because she's the best villain, that's why. Which Roald Dahl villain do you think is the most rotsome of them all? First up, the original gruesome twosome, the Twits. I tell you why I like the Twits, right? They're always trying to get birds to stick in their tree by using what? Yeah, some glue. They stick glue all over their tree branches and then the birds stick to the tree and then they, they turn the birds into bird pie. One of my favourite bits in the Twits is when some boys sit on the tree instead, right? Mr. Twit doesn't care. He just goes, well, I usually have boy pie, bird pie, but I'll just have boy pie now. He does not care. If Santa Claus sat on that tree, he'd eat Santa Claus. Be careful of our next villain. She might try to turn you into a mouse. It's the Grand High Witch. Down with children. Do them in, boil their bones and fry their skin. Pish them, squish them, bash them, mash them, break them, shake them, slash them, smash them. Offer chalkies with magic powder. Say eat up, then say it louder. Cram them full of sticky eats. Send them home with guzzling sweets. And in the morning, little fools go marching off to separate schools. A girl feels sick and goes all pale. She yells, hey, look. I've grown a tail. A boy who's standing next to her screams, Help! I think I'm growing fur! Another shouts, We look like freaks! There's whiskers growing on our cheeks. A boy who was extremely tall cries out, What's wrong? I'm growing small! For tiny legs begin to sprout through everybody round about. And all at once, and in a trice, there are no children, only mice! Get ready to boo for the fulsome menaces all the way from giant country, led by the flesh lump eater, the giants. I looked up villainous villain, and a villainous villain is someone who's abominably bad. So let's just think. We have the giants. Let me just remind you who they are. The Flesh Lump Eater, the Bone Cruncher, the Man Hugger, the Child Chewer, the Meat Dripper, the Gizzard Gulper, the Maid Masher, the Blood Bottler, and the Butcher Boy. Nine flesh-eating, child-chewing giants who guzzle 30 children. And finally, we have the fearsome former Olympian, Miss Trunchbull! Because she's real, we've all got head teachers that we're frightened of. All of us have had teachers that we know like this. Some of us have parents like it. And the fact that she picks little girls up by their pigtails and spins them round. If you are a boy of about eight or nine, you weigh exactly the same as an Olympic hammer throw. And she, can, she practices lobbing you out the window. 
And nice. at the end of that, and one thing I love as well is that when Bruce Bogtrotter beat her and ate the cake, she then picked up the plate and smashed it over his head. You've heard all the evidence. It's time to choose. Who do you think is Roald Dahl's most villainous villain? How are you doing, Clifton Primary in Birmingham? I hope you're not too scared. So there you go, you've had all the facts. Who do you think is Roald Dahl's worst villain? Shout it out! <laughs> oh no, I told you to be careful. have only just begun. Thank you so much to all our guests, to Rachel White, the Word Wizards, the cast of the Royal Shakespeare Company's Matilda the Musical, and of course, our delicious audience. Give yourselves a massive round of applause. You can watch this show again on demand and sign up for the October Puffin virtually live show with BBC presenter and author of The Racehorse Who Wouldn't Gallop, Claire Bolding. Exciting stuff. So from everyone here at the Cambridge Theatre, there is just one more thing to say. So all together now, Happy Roald Day! Bye! OK, everyone, it's time to find out if you were going to give a Roald Dahl character a birthday present, who would you give it to and what present would it be?
Hi, I'm Claire Balding and I've just written a brand new book for seven to nine year olds. It's called The Racehorse Who Wouldn't Gallop. Tune in to my Puffin Virtually Live free webcast. I'll be reading extracts from the book and I'll also be talking about subjects like the importance of teamwork, how you get the best out of everyone around you, as well as finding the champion within yourself, even in things that are difficult or scary, how you get the very best from yourself. And I'll be talking about how you write animal adventures, how you give animals personality. And your class is able to take part. They can ask all of their nosy questions live if you like. Just visit the website, which is puffinvirtuallylive.co.uk for more information. And I hope to see you there.